today is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. There'll be a red pew Bible in your pews. If you can open that with me to page 111. 111. John. John chapter 1 and verses 1 through 14. It'll be your second 111 you come to. John chapter 14. Now we'll also be turning to Proverbs today as well. John chapter 1. And we'll start with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word what? Was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness, what? Did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed on in his name, he gave what? Power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. I'd like to, before we move on, I'd like to get us started with a, the story video clip that we've kind of watched each week. This will tell us a little bit. I need you to pay very close attention to the opening words. Oh, you guys all know his name. There went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And so Joseph and Mary go to his home country to be taxed. Caesar Augustus. Now, Caesar Augustus had something going on, let me tell you. Caesar Augustus' time, the Roman Empire ruled over three million square miles. It was the entirety of the known world. All of the planet they knew of was ruled by Rome. Now this is kind of a big deal. To be in charge of all of this... I wonder what it's like 400 years not having heard from God. What's the instinct? What would you do? You would, you would try to make order and sense of the life that you have. Now let me tell you, that kind of order caused a major amount of chaos. There was more bloodshed than any other time in history. Caesar Augustus, a great leader. They say he was brilliant, but ruthless. A great leader. With one flick of the pen, everyone has to go to their own country to be taxed, to be counted in the census and be responsible for this weight, this yoke of the government. I think about Joseph and Mary, what it must be like in those days, if you had family, it was a custom, even if they had never met you, if, they, if you shared their name, they were to take you in when you were traveling and treat you as if you were family. Guys, I don't think they had hotels back then. 
there would be someone who probably lent some rooms out, but you would always first go about town asking for a relative, someone with your own name, maybe your mother's name, because in the Jewish heritage, the last name followed the woman. And imagine what this would look like. As you knocked on great uncle Filber's door, and he sees that your wife, not yet married, I'm sorry, the woman you are bringing with you is carrying a bastard child and says to you, no, I'm sorry, I don't think so. We don't have room for your kind. big mistake on their part, maybe. I want you to read with me in Proverbs. Go to your uh, pew Bibles. It'll be the first page 730. We're looking for page 730. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 21. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 21. We'll read the remainder of the chapter there. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 21. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be Proverbs 19. I'm looking at this thinking, those are not the right verses. Uh, page 738, 739. That verse 21 looks much better. Page 739, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. The human mind may devise many plans, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. Now, I'm going to read this. I printed off the message version of the Bible. It says the same thing, but in a different tone and in a different way of thinking and hearing it. So I want you to follow along in the Bible, but also hear this paraphrased version. Um, I'm starting with 21. We humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. Do you read that in that first verse? But God's purpose prevails. In the next verse, it's only human to want to make a buck, but it's better to be poor than a liar. Fear of God is life itself, a full life and serene. No nasty surprises. Some people dig a fork into the pie, but are too lazy to raise it to their mouths. Punish the insolent. Make an example of them. Who knows, somebody might learn a good lesson. Kids who lash out against their parents are an embarrassment and a disgrace. If you quit listening, dear child, and strike off your own, you'll soon be out of your depth. An unprincipled witness desecrates justice. The mouth of the wicked spew malice. The irreverent have to learn reverence the hard way. Only a slap in the face can bring a fool to attention. It says it a little different than what you're reading, doesn't it? Isn't it, isn't it interesting to hear the different ways? This morning, I told you guys I was also struck in my uh, study time. I wonder, I wonder what it, I wonder what it looks like. We humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. I wonder, I wonder what it would look like if, if for whatever reason I was unable to jump into that water and save my son. 
Or can you explain to me why in the world can people be standing right next to him and not reach over and pull him up out of the water? Oh, they probably would have eventually. Or I could have asked them to. Something different might have occurred. Uh, Jessup is fine. I'll, I'll tell you that we spend uh, in my in, behind my house. We have a hot tub, and we spend a lot of time in that hot tub. And Jessup goes underwater countless amount of times. I've actually had a guest come and and sit in the hot tub with us and get up and get out of the hot tub because they couldn't stand to see Jessup go underwater like that. Because he goes under and he flails around and he's smiling, and you have to reach in and pull him back up because most of the time he can't get back up but he doesn't mind it he he kind of likes it he's learning he's learning and and he's growing taller so he can really he can once he can get his feet around he can stand and stick his head up out of water but i wonder i wonder how it is that the whole world how it is that an image search on Google, all of them got it wrong? I mean, there were a couple. There were. They, right at the beginning, there was a, a willow tree nativity. And if we just scrolled a little bit farther, there's a stamp with the Virgin Mary and a naked baby. But it doesn't say that's who they are. What is going on? Is everybody around us underwater, flailing about, happy as can be? Are they not taking real air? What is happening? Why is it that, that marriages are failing? Children are growing up without parents, without fathers, and without mothers. Why are there people dying in the world? What is happening? Are they breathing different air? What is going on? And I think, I think this morning I hear God saying, reach out and grab my child. Pull him out of the water. Bring him up so he can breathe. You guys are here because you're hardcore. guys are here because you know God loves you. We have people on either side of us. Maybe it's your literal neighbor where you live. Maybe it's the, it's the people that you love, your friends. Maybe it's your people you work with, you do business with every single day. And, and, and today, in this, the Christmas story, Hear God say, reach out and bring them to me. Something incredible, something incredible happens after 400 years of not hearing from God. The single most incredible thing happens. A Savior is born. Nearly 33 years later, he's taken to the cross and he gives himself up for us. Many people told about it in the future that it was coming. That there would be a huge change happen. These people whose ancestors were Israelites, who God hand fed, he rained manna from heaven. He gave them quail that they could reach up and take and eat. He parted the waters. Those people go without hearing from God for 400 years. You think their Google search showed anything about Christ? <laughs> no. Most of them probably forgot to tell the stories anymore. How far? How far 
have you or your loved ones gotten from God? Are you 400 years away? How far have you walked away without... Sometimes... Sometimes it's really weird to me I, I, to see people flailing about and they're happy about it. Not really happy. It's not really an internal happiness. But, but, but all of these little things bring them a little bit of joy until the next morning. All of these little things bring them little bits of, of, of happiness until the new wears off. You know, he who dies with the most toys wins. Not. I want to tell you, Christmas is all about the cross. It's all about a redeeming God that says, ask me. Ask me into your heart. Ask me into your life. And I will, I will change your world. I will help you break the patterns in your life. I will help you right the wrongs. A God, a God, a God, Jesus Christ is the only one who can bring good from the bad. He's the only one. It's never too late to invite Jesus into our lives. We don't have to clean up our act first. He comes in even at the two-minute warning of life. It was not too late for Abraham at 100 years of age. It was not too late for Moses at 40 years in the desert. It was not too late for Jonah who ran from God. Not too late from Saul of Tarsus who persecuted Christians and who met Christ on the Damascus Road. It was not too late for Peter who denied Jesus or for Thomas who doubted him. It's not too crowded and it's not too late for you to meet Jesus. The Word. The Word made flesh. Our King and Savior. He comes to common folk. A carpenter. A common virgin girl. A star. To common shepherds. When God comes, He comes through common things. And you hear God call, Save my children. Reach out, love them. Reach out and love them. And if you say, I don't know what God has to offer. In this moment, I am reaching out to you. I am saying there is a God who no matter how many years you've been away, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you've messed up, He is waiting for you. He just wants to tell you He loves you. Let's pray. Oh God, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans. But God's purpose will prevail. See, Lord, I feel like I feel like sometimes we can be like the person with the fork into the pie but, but too lazy or too scared or even too hurt just to raise it to their mouth. Lord, I ask that, that it not take a slap to bring our attention to you. 
I pray that each and every one of these people here, these hardcore people that love you, I would pray. I would pray that they would hear your voice. That they would reach out to you. Lord, I ask this all in your precious name. Amen. If you would all stand with me as we sing our final song. Come thou fount of every blessing. It's on